Hey everybody, QuestWise here, and uh, if you got to see my live video that I did on Facebook, where I was celebrating hitting a thousand subscribers, I talked about a few ideas that I wanted to do um, moving forward with the channel. A couple of ideas that I wanted to do to, ex to expand the channel a little bit, and to add some new content to the channel rather than just some reviews and some unboxings and, and that kind of thing. One of the things I talked about and which I want to launch today is called the Wisdom of the Quest series. And this is going to be just a series where I talk about running games and how I run games. Um, I, I don't, I don't, you know, actually to be a, 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 a an expert on how to run games um, I don't, I don't think that you can actually really consider yourself an expert on running games because it's really, a, it's a very personal sort of thing. It's a very sort of, um, uh, you can be good at it. Uh, you can be really good at it. And, and that's the thing I want to talk about today is, um, there's a lot of people out there right now, especially in, in, in the D and D communities and stuff and fifth edition and, 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 um, you know, Pathfinder world and stuff that are talking about the Mercer effect. And if you don't know what the Mercer effect is, in a nutshell, it's basically Matt Mercer, who uh, is the guy who's running the Critical Role uh, channel and, um, and the Critical Role uh, things for Wizards of the Coast uh, games and stuff. It, Google Critical Role, there's billions of things out there on it. Um, and I enjoy them. Uh, I haven't kept up with them as much as I'm not as devoted to them. I'm not a critter uh, as everyone else does, but I enjoy them because I enjoy Matt Mercer and I enjoy his group of players. Um, but the the Mercer effect is basically um, that there are a ton of new people coming to the hobby because of Critical Role uh, and Matt Mercer and his group of players, and they're watching these these videos and they're watching these these um, th these episodes. And then they go in there by the game and they sit down and they play the game and they're disappointed at the fact that it's not as awesome as Critical Role. That they're not getting the same effect that they get when they experience, when they watch the Critical Role episodes. In, in part, it's because Matt Mercer and his crew of players are all professional actors. They do voices, they dress up, they have very in-depth um, and extremely in-depth campaigns and nuances and details to the game. They're all professional actors. And so what I wanted to do here is I wanted to expand the channel a little bit. And, and I, I, I have a feeling that most of my subscribers currently are probably play, people who have been playing for a long time. I don't, don't cover D&D &D very much. Uh, I don't cover Pathfinder very much, any of the sort of big names in the industry right now, because um, I like talking about OSR products. I like talking about smaller independent publishing companies. I like talking about quirky and weird things outside of D&D. &D. Now, I love D&D. &D. It's, it's, a, it's a cornerstone of, of my hobby experience and my hobby uh, sort of career. But there are tons of other people out there talking about it. I'm assuming that most of my subscribers are already sort of uh, established as players and game masters. What I'm hoping to get to is maybe show you some new tips and trick tricks to try. Or if you are new to the hobby and you're watching the channel, maybe I can give you some advice. Like I said, and a big, huge caveat here is that I don't consider myself to be a professional or expert game master. I do have lots of years of experience and that's how I want to show you what I have learned. And this is purely the way that I like to play. It is it's just a personal choice of the way that I like to run games and I like to play the games. And so if you enjoy the stuff that you're seeing on my channel and you enjoy the way the things, the, the, the things I talk about, the things I do, then hopefully these things will help you. Today I want to talk about being a first time or beginning game master or dungeon master or, you know, referee, whatever you want to call it. It can be a terrifying experience the first time you ever 
get to run a game. You get to run your friends, players, through a game. I would highly recommend that the first time you do it, not be with a bunch of strangers. Uh, that can be even more terrifying. Uh, because that takes a certain special skill set, I believe, of trying to figure out people uh, on a whim at a table that you have no idea of who they are, or their backgrounds, or any of that kind of stuff. I would suggest highly that the first time that you decide to run a game as a game master, that you would do it with a group of friends because they're going to be, you're, you're going to know them. You're going to know their nuances. You're going to know uh, the things that they like and dislike. Uh, they're also going to be a, probably a lot more lenient on you if you do something a little wonky. Here's my theory on role-playing games, though. There is no, I repeat, there is no wrong way to play a role-playing game. I'm very staunchly over uh, the idea of rulings over rules. That being that, um, yes, it is a rule book full of rules, but it should be a ruling at the table. If a rule doesn't fit or you don't remember the rule, simply go with a ruling that fits the situation that you're at the table with and roll with it. The entire object of our hobby is to have fun. And role-playing games are about storytelling and about creating stories and mythos and, and legends together as friends. And the Game Master's job, I feel, is to sort of facilitate a story. You come up with the idea of the story, the background of the story, the setting. There's a ton of established settings out there that you can draw inspiration from. You can draw inspiration from fictional novels, TV shows, movies, whatever you want to do. But as a game master, it's your job to sort of come up with that idea and the idea of an initial adventure to set your friends and players along the path of the story. But after that point, it really becomes a collaborative effort to tell a story. We're trying to create a new tale together, an epic adventure, right? Um, and you want to do it collaboratively. I, the things that I do most when I get to a table, and this is, again, personal preference. All of this stuff is just my opinion on how I enjoy to run games. But I like to involve the players in the game itself. Now, I don't want them to take over the game. I don't want them to be the game master. If that's the case, then I would just let somebody else be the game master. Um, but what I like to do is I like to involve my players as much as possible. So, for instance, little things like if they go to a town and they're looking for a blacksmith, you know, I'll facilitate whether or not they find a blacksmith, but then sometimes I'll pass it along to them and be like, what is the blacksmith's name? You come up with it. And I do this for a reason. I do this because players will be more invested in an NPC, a non-player character, if they get a little bit of feeling that they've created that character, right? So, so for instance, here's a story from my past, an actual, actual thing. Uh, and this is the reason why I do that little trick. We were in an adventure one time, uh, and uh, I was a game master. Uh, it was fairly new. It was very young. Um, it was in my college years, and um, I had created this uh, uh, several different NPCs, several different N uh, non-player characters that were uh, I, that I knew at some point were going to travel along with the characters uh, on this adventure that they were on. And I had created a lot of sort of like background for them and names and special abilities and all this, you know, kind of twerky things for them. The characters met them. They agreed to let them come along on the quest. And while they were on the quest, they basically used them as meat shields. Later, I talked to some of the players and was like, you know, why? This guy was here to help you. Why would you just sacrifice him so easily? And he said, well, we don't have any vested interests in this guy. We don't know this guy from, you know, Adam. He just, he was another NPC, uh, and he really didn't provide anything for us that we didn't already know or couldn't gather somewhere else, and thus we just, you know, whatever. He died. Um, so it was shortly after that that I began to see a trend that if you give the players the responsibility of helping create the character, things like, what are their names? What do they look like? Um, you know, what if it's so, for instance, a black shop? What does a blacksmith shop look like? Let them do a little bit of the work. You're taking your notes and listening to it, you know, taking and, and adding that to the mythos of the story that you're creating. They're now more invested in that character. They mean a little bit more to them because they've had an active part 
in Korea than some of those NPCs. And thus, they feel like they're a little bit more part of the game. And that their characters themselves feel a little bit more part of the world now as well, too. It becomes a little bit more of a living world for them as well. So a little tip on that end of things. Let your players be sort of involved in things. Um, again, like I said, these are all sort of my own personal opinions. This is all kind of a stream of thought kind of thing um, uh, as I go along. But um, that's my little tip and trick for today is basically let your players be involved. And again, remember, if you're having fun, they're going to be having fun. Don't worry about the rules so much. And next time we're going to talk about narrative. We're going to talk about being in the moment and, and doing things sort of off the book, you know, uh, that, that, that will, um, that will uh, make the game much more memorable. So next time we'll talk about narrative, but little tip and tricks for you today. And I'm going to continue this series at some point called the wisdom of the quest. And I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please drop a, me a comment down below. Tell me what kind of things you would like to hear from me, uh, talk about and, and how to better, better and further your game, those kinds of things as well, too. Um, and, uh, until next time I'm Questwise and we're out.